AWS Amplify is a set of tools that allows front-end and mobile developers to use AWS resources very easily. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with Amplify libraries for Swift and show you how to set all of that up in an Xcode project. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now you can see all the documentation here at docs.amplify.aws and I'll also leave a link in the description below. So let's go ahead and start off in our root directory of our project. Now we're going to start by installing the Amplify Amplify CLI and you can do that by adding in the command here. So as you can see, I'm going to use a curl command in order to install the Amplify CLI and I'm just going to simply run this and then the Amplify CLI will install on my machine. Now I don't need to fin uh, wait until this finishes because I already have Amplify CLI in installed on my machine, but it should only take a couple of minutes for you to install yours. Once Amplify CLI is done installing on your machine, you can verify that it's installed by running Amplify dash dash version and you can see which version you have. As you can see here, I have 10.0. Next, we're gonna go ahead and run Amplify Configure. As you can see, there seems to be a new version available. I haven't upgraded yet, but you can go ahead and do that whenever you feel like it. But I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my browser has opened and I signed in. Now, this should go without saying, but you are gonna need an AWS account in order to uh, start using Amplify. I'll also leave a link for creating an AWS account in the de description below. Now that I'm all signed in through the browser, I can go back over to the terminal and hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and configure a new user by running Amplify Configure, and it's going to ask me which region I'm in. I'm going to go ahead and use the one that's um, best for me, but you go ahead and use whatever makes sense for you. So I'm going to choose US West 1, and you can enter in a username. I'll just go ahead and uh, enter in Amplify uh, Demo and make sure that your name does not have any spaces in it. Once you enter a name, the browser will open up again for you and you will see the same username that you entered in before. And we just wanna make sure that access key, access key programmatic access is selected and we'll hit next permissions. Then we're gonna make sure that administrator access dash amplify is selected. Then we'll go to next on tags. We don't need any tags, it's optional. And then um, we're gonna review all the information, make sure that it's all the same, and then we'll create that user. Once that's done, you're gonna come to this page, which is gonna show you the access key ID and the secret access key. Now, it's very important that you don't ever show these to anybody because it will give those people permission to access your AWS resources, which is a very poor choice in terms of security. So make sure you never have this available to anybody else. Go ahead and copy these by clicking the copy icon. Uh, one at a time and opening your terminal hit enter to continue i'm going to actually um, hit enter and i will remove myself and go ahead and enter in the access key id where it fits go back grab your secret access key and copy that as well and then go ahead and hit enter Next, it's going to ask you to set up a profile name. I'll just go ahead and give it the same um, name as my username. And then go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that your Amplify user has been all set up and created. Now that the Amplify CLI is all installed on your machine, we can actually create an Amplify project at the root of our directory. And as you can see, I'm in the root of my Xcode directory. And you can see that I have this Amplify Swift directory or uh, up and running Amplify Swift directory and the Xcode project here because I'm going to be creating an iOS or a macOS project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Amplify init like so. Then it's going to ask me a series of questions. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for each and every one of these which will provide the default answer, but you can update them as you see fit. So um, as you can see here, I'm getting the default configuration, um, the default name. I'm gonna select AWS profile. I'll go ahead and select the, the name that's right there. <laughs> I'll select the name that's right here, which is Amplify Demo, uh, the one that I just created. And now you will see that it's gonna take a couple of seconds to actually um, set up the Amplify project. The last question will be, whether we want to share non-sensitive configurations on failures with the AWS Amplify team, I'm going to go ahead and press enter to provide the default answer. But if you hit Y, then you'll uh, say yes. Then once that's all done, you'll see that we have actually uh, been able to successfully create an, an Amplify project. And if I go ahead and hit LS, you'll actually see that there have been a couple of different um, things that have changed. So we have the Amplify configuration.json file, AWS configuration.json file, and the Amplify directory that have been 
added to our root uh, our root directory. Now, another thing that's changed is if you take a look at our Xcode project, you'll actually notice that there is an amplify config folder, which will hold the AWS configuration and amplify configuration files in it. This will allow our Xcode project, whether it be iOS or macOS, to actually communicate with our backend and provide all that uh, sensitive information and the configuration and setup to use the resources that we end up providing. So if we decided to move forward and use something like Amplify Auth or Amplify uh, Storage, then it will know about those resources and we'll be able to use them effectively. The next step from here is to go ahead and add Amplify as a dependency in our project. So we'll go up to File, Add Packages, and then we're going to just go ahead and enter in the repository for the Amplify Swift um, repo on GitHub. So we'll put that into the top search bar at, um, at the top right, and you'll actually notice that it says um, Amplify Swift, and we're going to select up to next major version. We're going to make sure that this says 2.0, and we're going to go ahead and add package. Once the package product screen appears, all we're going to select for this demo is going to be Amplify, but if you had a specific package or plugin or library that you're interested in using, then you would um, add that here. You can always go back and add more later. So we're going to go ahead and add package and we'll actually see that Amplify Swift is going to be added as one of our package dependencies and all of its dependencies as well. With the Amplify libraries installed as a dependency on our project, we can go ahead and update our app object, which is in my case, up and running Amplify Swift app with the configuration code, which will allow us to configure Amplify at runtime, which is very important so that we don't actually end up crashing our app by running or using Amplify resources before Amplify is actually config configured. So what we'll do is we're going to start by importing uh, Amplify in this screen on the app page. Then what we need to do is we need to also create a function called configure amplify inside of this configure amplify. We'll be able to set up the different plugins that we're, we're planning on using. Again, we're not using plugins in this video, so we don't need to do that, but let's go ahead and start off with the do catch block. And we're going to try to, uh, to run amplify.configure. And if that works, then we're going to go ahead and print out a statement saying successfully configured Amplify. Uh, if we run into any errors, we'll just simply print out, could not configure Amplify, we'll print that error. Now, what, like I said, we want to configure Amplify as soon as possible so that we don't try to use Amplify resources uh, before Amplify is configured. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna call this function configure Amplify in the initializer of our app object. So in the init function, let's go ahead and call configure Amplify. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and build and run. And it doesn't matter whether we want to do this for iPhone or Mac OS, it'll work on both. And we just go ahead and build that. And we should see successfully configured Amplify in our Xcode logs. So the app opens up, it's up and running. And as we can see right here, successfully configured Amplify. So we know that everything's working. So that's how you get up and running with the Amplify libraries for Swift. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.